lift big or go home or something like that. I mean, you're like, you know, what does the science say about that? Like you're, this is, you know, you've really contributed to this, this area. Um, so I had always thought that if you're doing anything over 12 to 15 repetitions, it's basically glorified cardio and that, you know, it's just muscle endurance. You're not going to gain muscle. Um, and it shows that you can gain um, muscle, similar amounts of muscle, regardless of the loading across a wide range of loading spectrums, up to 30 to even 40 repetitions, which is a long, that's a long set. Let's say an MRI data or ultrasound, which we, we've used extensively, really shows no difference. But Stu Phillips uh, had published a study circa 2012, and it was on untrained subjects doing leg extensions, and it showed that there was no difference. 30% 1RM, which is like 30 reps versus 80% 1RM, which was like eight reps. And I remember it as clear as day saying, still, come on, this is untrained subjects doing leg extensions. That's, they get jacked from doing spin cycling. That was, I think, my exact quote. And the older individuals are gonna need the heavier loads to get those highest threshold motor units, the type two fibers into play. And um, lo and behold, I carried out that study in no difference. <laughs> it was really eight crow. And, uh, and since then, there's just been so much evidence not only in it just across the spectrum of populations, untrained, trained, older, younger, men, women. And it really is a beautiful thing because it provides so much flexibility and options uh, for issues like training through injuries. So if you're training through injuries, you know, heavy loading can be contraindicated. And also particularly for the older individuals because joint related um, issues where heavy loading can be very uncomfortable for them and perhaps debilitating, is that the lighter loads have to be taken with a high degree of effort. So they have to really, the last few reps are difficult to complete, uh, you're not gonna achieve gains. Taking pink dumbbells and just you know doing some lifting, okay, I, I stop. Uh, you must challenge the muscle. So heavier load, when you lift heavier, it, just innately you're gonna challenge the muscles. The first number of repetitions are very easy to complete. And if, if, if it's easy to complete, you're really not doing much for, for challenging. Because the reason that the body adapts to strength training is survival. And uh, if you are not challenging it in a way it is not accustomed to being challenged, because the muscles and bones, et cetera, tendons, ligaments, are being challenged beyond their present capacity. Do we need to train to failure? Is that important? For an operational definition would be the inability to perform another repetition with proper form. And uh, we carried out a meta-analysis recently on this topic. And the bottom line is, is that that's the bodybuilding mentality of go hard or go home. Every set needs to be taken to failure. Um, the evidence does not indicate that's the case. So certainly you need to train with a high amount of effort. Uh, but to take, uh, all, certainly to take every set to failure is not, not only is it not, doesn't show any benefit for hypertrophy, it actually showed a small detriment for strength. So with strength, stopping a couple reps short of failure seemed to have better effects on uh, maximizing strength. For very high level, let's say you're very close to your genetic ceiling, that it might make the need to go to failure, at least on some of the sets. This is purely speculative on my end, but I can see uh, at least the logical rationale where it makes your challenge, it's a way to challenge the body in a way that it is not used to. Uh, I will tell you that in when I coach bodybuilders, uh, I generally incorporate some failure training. Most sets within two to three reps of failure. So there's a concept called the repetitions in reserve. But I, my own interpretation of the literature is somewhere between probably one to three rep RIR, reps from failure, would be needed to um, promote optimal adaptations. You can still see adaptations, particularly when you're uh, more in the newbie stage, in the early stages. Um, below that, I probably would say that's always gonna be effective and you probably never have to go to failure. For bodybuilders, high-level athletes, perhaps some failure training, the last set to failure. Single joint and machine-based exercises would be more appropriate for failure. There's a greater potential for injury, you get, certainly you're gonna need a spotter in that regard. My biggest hobby horse in life is to promote the importance of evidence-based practice. It is not simply deferring to research. Research is never gonna tell you what to do. It's gonna provide general guidelines, particularly in the applied sciences like 
exercise and nutrition. What are their genetics? What, are their, what is their lifestyle, their stress level, their sleep, their uh, nutritional status? Um, so developing a program from the research me, uh, means to understand the research. How many sets do you need to do or how long do you have to rest between them? Is that important? Yeah, if your goal is just to build some muscle, gain some strength, a very minimalist routine. I mean, training an hour a week, let's say two days, two half hour sessions a week can give you very nice, most people, very nice results, provided you're training hard. Is that going to, if you're looking to be a bodybuilder, is that going to, or you're going to step on stage? No. So volume has been shown to be a driver of hypertrophy. Again, we've done uh, original research on this. And uh, there is a dose response relationship up to a certain point. As a general guideline to optimize hypertrophy, you want to be somewhere between 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week. What is your minimal effective dose? Uh, and that was roughly around four sets uh, per week, uh, per muscle per week. Um, and I think it probably, for most people, the majority of gains in that period of time. And then if you want more, you're going to have to devote more time.